Namastu and welcome. Namastu. 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 <laughs> welcome to another Sunday service here at the Holy Coptic Church of the Black Messiah. My name is Pastor Dr. Cleveland W. Venus III, also known as Kahun Anku Sarah. As always, uh, we like to say Namastu to those who are watching during this live stream, Namastu, which means they bow to the divinity in you. And we say Shalom Rayo, which simply means good morning or peaceful uprising. We encourage you to come down to historic Bain Town any Sunday at 9 a.m. for our Sunday service or any Wednesday at 7 p.m. for our True Life Fellowship and Bible study as we are a teaching church and we encourage you to question our doctrine and whatever it is that you have questions on. Today we are celebrating our first day of the fasting during the days of atonement. And so today's sermon is going to center around that, but more importantly, we want to center around what Yahshua Karas taught through his ministry. And so today's sermon is entitled, Yahshua Taught at One Minute. Yahshua Taught at One Minute. Let's say that together, at one minute. At, at one, one minute. minute. This word, at one minute, we will see is something that we've always seen, has always been presented to us, but it hasn't been presented as at one meant. And of course, those who can simply put the word together, you see the word atonement, yes? Come on. Yes? Yes. 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 I hope y'all didn't miss that, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and so today we're going to have our sister, Ahiti Kawaret, or Alexis, going to be helping us to read today. And so I'll guide you. As, as we proceed, but I want to start in one of our um, one of our parchments written by our very own Basesh, out of Hotel Tar, and the name of the parchment is Yahshua Follow the Law. Why don't you? Yahshua Follow the Law. Why don't you? And I think a big part a big reason why many people feel that they're doing what they should be doing with regards to Yahshua falsely called Jesus Christ today is that all of their lives they've been told one thing over and over again even though that thing cannot be really traced to the scriptures in any real way or to any real facts no real reality and so we have to bring the reality of who Yahshua Karast was and is to us as a people because as Atonis Karastians, we do have our very own doctrine. We've always had our own doctrine. And you're gonna learn that today in this sermon. And so the first thing we wanna ask is, well, when was, when was Yahshua Karast born? Because in order for us to understand what Yahshua Karast taught, why he taught it and why we live it is because if we don't know why we're doing what we're doing, then we're just aimlessly moving like everybody else through Christendom. Amun? Amun. And so, I'm going to just do a quick little tone of history lesson here and explain when Yahshua was born. Yahshua Karas was born in the seventh year of Ankh Anaton's shepherding of the Holy Coptic Church. So, Ankh Anaton, who is the father, of Yahshua, as you'll see here in a bit, was reviving a way of life, just as we, in this day and time, are reviving a way of life, whereby we are able to be at one with the Most High. It says, thus we record the birth of Yahshua Karast as him being born in the seventh year of the Coptic Church's resurrection, whereby Atonism was revived. The year of his birth is very important because Yahshua being of the royal family, so he was royalty, mm -hmm. as you are royalty, which descended directly from the priestly line of the Moseses, Tehutimos I, Tehutimos II, Hat Shep Sut, and Tehutimos III, down through Seti Dawud. You see this in the book of Matthew or Ma'atu, uh, right in the very first chapter, where they give you the generations or the genealogy of Yahshua coming down through Seti Dawood who is the real David and was directly involved in restoring 
the teachings of atonism. So the, the teachings of atonism had to be restored. For this reason, we, he was given a throne name of Tut Ankh Atun, the living image of the Lord at his birth, and Yahshua at his first introductory initiation into the rites of atonism performed during the Coptic rite of baptism and circumcision, both as a confirmation that he would promote amongst humanity, most especially the lost sheep of the house of Ishmael, Israel, and Miniani, the importance of being at one with the Atono Adonai. So this Yahshua Karast was indeed a title. And he was Tut Ankh Atun, who later became Tut Ankh Amun. And you see this in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 15, where it speaks of Yahshua as the Amen. Yahshua was the Amen in Revelation 3 and 14. Thus he was recognized from the times, even prior to his birth, as the eldest son of the Atun, or the highest lord in the celestial heavens, as well as the successor of Ankh and Atun, and by way of such he became the anointed one who is the king. So this was not merely somebody who fell out of the sky. This was not merely somebody who was um, birthed by a woman that never had sex because a spirit overshadowed her and then a baby was born and then he had to run and you know all these mystical things were happening but then in the same thing all these practical things were happening and he got to run. <laughs> Because if you, Jesus Christ Almighty, which who you want to talk to? Or somebody ain't telling the story correctly. I'm on. And so, I wanted to make that point coming out of the gate. Because just like how Yahshua would have been initiated. Just as how Yahshua would have been named. Just as how Yahshua would have been circumcised as a man. We don't do female circumcision. But as a man, he would have been circumcised. The same must happen with we who are of the body of the Quran. Now, why today's sermon is entitled Yahshua taught at one minute is because we have so many people throughout Christendom that are teaching well, different things. They're telling us whatever sounds good, whatever is the flavor of the season is what they're teaching. Right? But what did Yahshua teach? And why is it important for us to know what Yahshua taught? Because we are the continuation of Yahshua. And if Yahshua had a specific doctrine, then we too need to teach that specific doctrine. Now here's the thing. Was Yahshua teaching Christianity? No. Christianity didn't even exist in Yahshua's time. So why are we teaching Christianity today? If we say we're following the Messiah or the Messiah Yahshua Karas. Now people will give you all type of different answers, but the reality is he actually warned against Christianity. What do I mean? I'm not talking about our true religious identity. I'm talking about what the Greco Romans came in and by way of identity theft mm -hmm. stole from the original. Atonis Karastian doctrine. And we see this here, because I know some people are saying, what is he talking about? Where is he getting this from? If we go to the book of Matthew, you should have something to write with. You should have a pad or something that will allow you to take notes. But this verse has been sitting here, and people read it, but Let's start right at verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? This is what people are preaching today. They're saying that it's the end of the world in one breath, and then another breath, we're in the most modern times ever. So as the world becomes more and more, I guess we get closer to the end of it. Are we in the latter days? <laughs> or are we in the most modern times? Right? 
confusing. <laughs> Yahshua answered and said to them, Take heed that no man deceive you. So, in the last days, there are going to be men deceiving people. Yeah. And then say, Watch out for the devil. Watch out for the enemy. That's not what it says. Take heed no man deceive you. Right? It can be the person who's smiling with you. It can be the person who may even dress like you. It may be the person who say they profess what they profess. It can be the person who say they go to church. It can be the person who's holding the Bible. You understand? Because when you read these scriptures, you realize religion played a huge role in trying to destroy atonism. Come on. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So he goes even further. And explaining who would be deceiving. Who should you watch out for? <laughs> for many shall come in my name. Well, who's coming in the name of who? Because they say this is Jesus Christ talking. We know better than that, but they say it's Jesus Christ. Hmm? So Christ, Christians, Christians, Christ. They say they're coming in Jesus' name, Christ. Then they say that's his name. You know that's not his name, but they said that's his name. Mm -hmm. and shall deceive many. Mm -hmm. So they are coming in the name, because they'll say they're coming in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Yes? They'll say that they're Christians. Yes? Mm -hmm. They'll say that Jesus is Christ. So why is he saying that people who say this are the people who deceive in you? Mm -hmm. Don't get mad at me. This is in your scriptures. Mm -hmm. This is in the King James Version. The myth made by me. Right? And so it's important that we point this out because if you don't understand that there's another doctrine, there's a counter doctrine being taught as the doctrine of Yahshua Karas, you'll never, never figure out why you still can't get your life in order. And so we want to read just another portion out of Yahshua Follow the Law. Why don't you? To assist us with just understanding a little bit about who, who this Yahshua was. But he was definitely a part of a sacred society called the Essenes. Everybody said that word, the Essenes. The Essenes. And this sacred society, he was a teacher amongst these Essenes. It says, with all of this, we also want all those, this is coming from page 17 in the, in the Yahshua Follows the Law, for those who may have it, with all of this, we also want all those who seek true faith, as well as those that have embraced true faith, to fully realize that much of the missing years of the willing son, the Mesa, Yahshua Karas, actually took place amongst this spiritual community where he was a teacher of what? Ma'at. Ma and that's why the book of Matthew originally is known as Ma'at Hu. Because the book is actually teaching you about this who, this creative source or force of will, who taught Ma'at. And Ma'at is universal order and the balancement of deeds. And that he was, he was betrayed to be killed by a wicked priest amongst this same sacred society. Somebody who dressed like him, somebody who prayed like him, somebody who functioned just like he did. Who was a priest like him. You understand? And that's why he was saying... Be careful no man deceive you. You understand? And so the importance, the importance in this paragraph for me in this sermon is the fact that it points out here that Yahshua is a teacher of Ma'at. Not Christianity. Not even Judaism. This is very important. And so now we move into the original books of the Bible. We're going to go on page 190. Verse 3, as A.T. Alexis uh, assists with the reading today, um, page 190, verse 3 in book 10, the book of the divine principles of Ma'at, which is universal order and the balancement of deeds. Can you read it? O oh, humanity, the divine law subscribed to you by Anairi, the ever-living universal source are based off of Ma'at. So stop. There are divine laws, and these divine laws are what? Prescribed. Okay? You go to the doctor, you don't feel well, you need treatment, the doctor does what? Prescribes medication. 
gate, whether it's a herbalist who prescribes you some sea moss and something else, or whether it's a medical doctor who's saying you need to take some of these pills, whatever it is, there's a prescription. Now, after the doctor prescribes the medicine for you, what has to happen? You, have to follow the you gotta fill the prescription and you gotta follow the instructions in order for the medicine to be effective. Amor? Amor. So yes, the divine laws have been prescribed and they are all based off of what? Ma'at. Ma now who was teaching Ma'at? Joshua was teaching Ma'at. You understand? Let's continue. Which has the principle that exists in order to meet the intricate needs of humanity which is composed of people with diverse natures and often conflict, conflicting interests. All right, stop there. So the reason why this was prescribed for us as a people is because we are a people with diverse natures and often conflicting interests. Mm -hmm. We are a people with diverse natures. The Most High saw this and said the only way we can bring them together, the only way they can become at one, is by way of Ma'at. So the reason why Yahshua was teaching Ma'at was to bring or help us as a people to become at one with the Most High. This is why we're saying Yahshua taught at one man. This ability to become at one. Mm -hmm. That is ultimately atonement. Amun? Amun. Amun. Continue. As such, the precepts, rites, rituals, laws, commandments, and principles found within these original books of the Bible are firmly not rooted in such a way as to avoid a split disorder or embarrassment and the countless often detrimental problems which, is, which it cause, causes for humanity in varying degrees of genetic potency. So everything that's being taught within these original books of the Bible is rooted in such a way as to avoid its foot, to avoid disorder. We as a people live in a society that's very disorderly. Mm -hmm. Yes? In our lives, we have disorderly way of uh, running our homes, running our businesses, and just running our personal selves. And it causes for us to not be able to live up to our fullest potential. When we start to examine our everyday movements, it's just the little things, you know. Mm -hmm. People are looking for some huge miracle to change their life. Mm -hmm. It's something as simple as going, going, let's go to bed an hour earlier. Mm -hmm. Just when you make your plate at night, take half of it and put it in the fridge for lunch. And just eat that one half of the thing. Simple things that will help you to function at a more, at a higher potential. Mm -hmm. Little things. We're praying for these huge miracles and we're constantly uh, uh, slowing ourselves down by not paying attention to these little things. Mm -hmm. And so, right here in the original book to the Bible is explaining that yes, we do have these divine laws. These divine laws are rooted in Ma'at. One of the divine laws is that during the days of atonement, which starts today, May 21st, and ends June 20th, we fast as atonus Corastians. We fast from sunrise to sunset. And the importance of fasting is that it allows for us to one physically give our bodies a break from eating all of the crazy stuff we eat or don't eat right but it gives the digestive system um in the physical sense an opportunity to rest but it also helps us to starve some of the habits that we have it helps us to break some of the habits mm -hmm. that we have it helps us to clear up our systems physically so that spiritually, we can become more effective. All right? So it's very, very important that you stick to your fast. It's very, very important that you adhere to it. No one's going to be standing over you to make sure you do it. Only you. You're going to know if you sneak in to eat. <laughs> you know, if you got a pocket full of candy, if you got something you know you ain't supposed to. You're going to know that. You understand? Because I'm fasting. I really don't have time to worry about whether you... I mean, I, I want you to make sure that you do what you're supposed to do. But we're all adults here. Yes. You understand? The children that are old enough, nine, from around the age of nine, they can fast for half of the day, from sunrise to about 12. Yes? yes. And we'll go into the specifics of it, but the point of the matter is, we are following the divine laws. 
coming out of Ma'at, which allows for us to be at one with the Most High. And so now, we're going to move into the book of John, chapter 10. And, and here's another reason why we're saying Yahshua taught at one minute. All right? John, chapter 10. Right at verse 30. I'm going to pull it up on the uh, projector for everybody as well. The sister Alexis Reed. I and my father are I and my father are Christians. <laughs> That's what you said? Sorry. I and my father are Jews. That's what it said? Mm -hmm. Anybody Bible says that. I just want to make a point here. Because I know we have different Bibles in here. So they may slip one in on us. <laughs> yeah, they slip these words in. And, I and my father are Baptists. I and my father are Christians. I and my father are one. Full stop. Full stop. <laughs> hmm? And this is very important. And then the next verse tell you who threw rocks at him. And then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. So he wasn't on their run, obviously. These people who call themselves Jews. Yes? Yeah. And so the reality of the situation is that bothered them. Him saying that he and his father, or the mother, father, and Nay Ray were one, that troubled the religious establishment of that day and time. Because they were teaching something other than to be one with the Most High. Mm -hmm. They were teaching you to follow all of their traditions. Mm -hmm. They were teaching you to follow the law the way they saw fit. You understand? This is why he had issues with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Those who said that they sat in the seat of Moses. Those who said that they were the law keepers. Just like today we have those who feel as if nobody can explain anything to them. Because they are too uh, heavenly bound. Which makes them no earthly good. <laughs> you understand? And so now we go to the book of John chapter 17. Because it's going to make it even clearer now. Because we have too many people trying, really, really trying to do their best. You understand? They really, really... Uh, uh, we saw a, um, a video clip from uh, maybe three years ago of this uh, pastor from Barbados who came in the Bahamas and taking all the money, right? And I smiled. I was like, well, you know, they got to be blamed too, though. Yes. Because the scriptures say to test every spirit. Obviously, they didn't test this fellow. I mean, the woman's going to give him her land of beachfront property in the old island. So he could pray for her. Mm -hmm. He said, that's some serious faith right there. She said, pray for man. <laughs> you understand? But, but I smiled at that because I said, even though, yes, her actions were wayward, mm -hmm. she still had faith that the prayer from that mm -hmm. one man could change her life. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Do you have that type of faith in the tone, is it? Mm. That's the question. And we're not saying you should give us your hands and we can break them. We don't, we don't play that game. But the point I'm making is that type of faith moves mountains. Mm -hmm. That type of faith moves mountains. You understand? And so we're in uh, John chapter 17. And John chapter 17 is actually a prayer that Yahshua was, um, he was actually praying. And he was praying for his disciples. And before, I want to start at verse 20, but I just want to show you something right around verse 9. He was praying, and that's what he said. What does he say, uh, Ahiti uh, Alexis? I pray for them. I pray not for the world, oh. but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And so, all so, so verse, <laughs> verse 9 says, he praying for them, those who were given to him. But he said he ain't praying for the world. Hmm. Wow. 
Because this word world, yeah, they're, they're playing with us. Because in, in John 3 and 16 it says, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. But this word world in the Greek is cosmos. Mm -hmm. You know, the Greeks were getting their information from we, the Tamareans, and the word cosmos, the word most is what? The Tamarian. Yes. Ahmos. Kosmos. Mm -hmm. Child. child. Mm -hmm. A child of the cosmos. Mm -hmm. The cosmosian. A child who is at one or in alignment with the universe. As within, so without. As without, so within. Mm -hmm. And these were the people that Yahshua was praying for. Right? It wasn't so much about the religion as we see it today. But let's go on to verse 20 now and see what it says here. Neither pray I for these men, but for them also which shall believe on me through their, through their word. Now, he says to believe on him. <laughs> to believe on him. Let's just take a minute. Because I want us to be clear about what these scriptures are saying. Because if we're not clear then we'll, we'll be left in a state of confusion. And that's where the devil rules, in confusion. <laughs> but this idea, this reality, of, this, this is the Greek, obviously, but this is the strongest importance. Believe on, all right? <laughs> in the Greek it has as, into, unto, to, towards, for, or among. So it doesn't mean you're just focusing on this one person and saying, oh, we believe on you, Jesus, we believe on you, Jesus. No, you are in the rank and file of Yahshua Karas. You're in the same Kinesa. You're having the same prayers. You're respecting the same divine laws and living the same divine laws. If you're doing what Yahshua is doing, then you can say you are a disciple of Yahshua. You can't say you are a football player, but you never played football before. <laughs> Hmm? You can't say, well, yeah, man, I play basketball, and, uh, you know, I hooping. Mm -hmm. oh, for real? So, like, what's your average score when you hoop? I mean, I don't hoop like that, like that. <laughs> you know? I guess it's, well, either you hoop or you don't hoop. <laughs> either you're in a tonus or you ain't in a tonus. That's right. Either you live in this thing or you ain't living this thing. Right. Hmm? This is what Yahshua was talking about. He said, these are the people who I'm praying for. Yes? Continue. That they all may be one. Okay, now we're going to read this part slow. <laughs> As thou, Father, art in me, uh -huh. and I in thee. Uh -oh. That they also may be one in the us. Okay. Go ahead. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. So this verse is crucial. Yes? Because mm -hmm. the reason why he's praying is so that they all may be what? One. 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 So our religion is in the scriptures. We're atonists. We're at oneists. Ah, now you hear it. Huh? We're at oneist. We gotta become one. Let's see what this word one means. Okay. Ace one. A primary numeral, abundantly, uh, man, one or another, only, other, some. Okay? It also has the meaning in opposition to many and added to the nouns after the manner of an adjective, etc., etc. So it's saying we're all, by way of ma'at, going to become one body. It doesn't mean that everybody's going to agree all the time. It doesn't mean that everybody's going to like everybody all the time. You understand? Because if you look at what is called an ecosystem, mm -hmm. this is where the reality comes in. In an ecosystem, they are the fish and they hang out in the water. Mm -hmm. They are the frogs and they're a little bit in and they're a little bit out of the water. <laughs> they are the birds and they're up in the sky. They are the snakes and they in the grasses or mm -hmm. the trees or wherever they are. And you got everybody that lives in their own way and, and, and that which helps them to be balanced in this ecology. And the tonism is our ecology. The tonism is our reality. That ecology is one, though. Because if one of those species in that ecology is affected, 
It right. affects the entire right. ecology. So no matter how much you like a person or don't like a person, if they're an atonist and they're here and they're contributing to atonism and to the Kinesa here and worldwide, if something happens to them, if their contribution is not allowed to come into play or to come into focus, it affects us all. And this is what Yahshua was teaching. You understand? Because we have religions today that say everybody has to just be the same. They have to dress the same. They have to speak the same. If you don't speak like me, I'm more righteous than you. So you better watch out. Because if you don't speak like me, you're not righteous like me. If you ain't righteous like me, you really ain't righteous. Because I'm really righteous. I mean, you're really righteous. If you don't do what I do. And that's the game they play. That's the silly game they play. You understand? And everybody going to hell. Huh? <clears throat> So no, he was saying that they all, not some, all of them who live in the image and after the likeness of the guardian angelic host, those who are actually taking the prescription of Mahat that was prescribed for them. See, I'm praying for all of them to be one. But then he says, as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee. So this oneness is not a one-sided thing. He is in the mother, father, and the mother, father is in him. Let's say it another way. You and your children, and your children are in you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's called DNA. It's called RNA. It's called chromosomes mm -hmm. on one level. Yes? Mm -hmm. But it's called also a reality of atonism in so far as, as you begin to live it the way that it's prescribed, and I begin to live it as it's been prescribed, that it is in me and it is in you. And it is in us. You understand? And this is why we cannot deviate from the scriptures. We can't say, well, I want to do it the way I want to do it. Because then we won't be one. Right. You understand? It says that they also may be one in us. Because he's leading by example in so far as the most I have only one in they Ray is one with him. And he's saying, and also, I'm one with the Most High Heavenly One. And I want all of them to be one with us. So we all can be one. This was the doctrine that Yahshua was teaching. So we say, don't know, he was teaching the kingdom of heaven. Where is the kingdom of heaven? In you. In you, at one with you. So I'm not arguing, we're not, we're not disputing that. We're not saying he wasn't teaching the kingdom. Yes, he was teaching the kingdom. But he was saying that the kingdom was? Yeah. Ah. Too many of us are looking for this kingdom outside of us. It can manifest outside of us if we live it, if we bring it to fruition. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Where you going then? Where you running to heaven so fast? That's a lazy mind's doctrine. The lazy mind just want to go to heaven. The righteous mind want to build heaven. Come on. You understand? You got this lazy mentality of, oh, I can just fly away. I fly away, I die, I'm going away. I fly away, I die, my husband and my wife. I fly away, these children mess with me. Uh, that's what we're saying. I just going to fly away. Uh, if you don't believe in that, you say, stop the world and let me off. <laughs> Right? There's all these songs about just stop and never let go when I'm tired. No. You are the hands of the Most High. You are the feet of the Most High. You are the eyes of the Most High. That's why we got to see with African eyes and hear with African ears and speak with African tongue. Because it has to happen through you. But you don't, you don't see who you are. But you know John didn't see who he was in him. Go to Revelation uh, um, 22. John didn't see who he, who he was. So don't feel bad. We all had to come from a place of ignorance in order to be clear about who we are as atonists. Mm -hmm. We're going to start at verse 8 in the book of Revelation. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship the fourth feet of the angels who showed me these things. So stop. So John was like, how many of us were when we came into atonism? Mm. This this doctrine is whoa. Really, really amazing. <laughs> wow. 
know, I heard these things. I saw these things. And the person who's giving me these things got to be out of this world. Can't be somebody like me. So what does John do? He fell down to worship before the feet of the angels. So this is an angel, yes? Yes. Yes. Which showed me these things. Then what? Then said he unto me. Oh. See thou do it not. Listen, listen. Stop, please. Please. I need you to get up. Go ahead. For I am thy fellow servant. Stop. If the angel is saying that John is a fellow servant, that makes John a what? An angel. An angel. Because we both serve him, the Most High. Come on. And if he's saying a fellow servant, fellow. <laughs> come on, let's look at this word, because I don't, I don't want us to miss what we are teaching you. This is what Yahshua was teaching. That's why the Jews were trying to sock him. <laughs> hmm? They're trying to bash Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to say it that way so y'all can hear me. Right? He said, thy what servant? Thy fellow servant. Let's see what this word fellow servant is in the Greek. It says, Sondulos, a fellow servant, one who serves the same master with another. Uh -oh. The associate of a servant, they say slave, one who with others serves a king. A colleague! Mm. If someone is your colleague, then you on the same level with them. Yeah. Hmm? A colleague of one is Christ's servant in publishing the gospel. One who with others acknowledges the same Lord, mm -hmm. Yahshua, and obeys his commands. One who with others is subject to the same divine authority in the messianic economy. They say economy here. I said ecology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of angels as the fellow servants oh, of Christians. <laughs> Slip that one in there, right? <laughs> so this John, this Tats al Yahanu, what is the angel saying to him? That you are, that he was a what? He was also an angel. Don't be afraid to say it. What is Barsash saying to us? Yeah. Come on now. He didn't just come and say, Well, I'm Gabriel and y'all gotta worship me. He said, No. We are all fellow servants. You understand? It doesn't mean we don't have hierarchy. It doesn't mean we don't have meritocracy, merit, merit, uh, the ability is a big word, right? The ability to, to earn by way of, of, of doing what is necessary, right? We are fellow servants. And then what does it go on to say? I know thy brethren, the prophets. Uh huh. I know. Them which keep the sayings of this book worship God. Now you, the way you read it, let me let me let me read it. Let me read it another way. Right? Then said he unto me, See thou do it not. Don't bow down to me, for I am thy fellow servant. We are one. We are one. And of thy brethren the prophets. So this was an angelic society. It wasn't only men. There were women there too. So women. When they start teaching this and they want to leave you out, you got to stop them and ask them, whose image and likeness are you in? Because they said, we was made in the image and not the likeness of God. Mm -hmm. And then they made this woman too. So, what did he do? Tear himself in half? He's a mafodite? What? <laughs> what did he do? No, the women were here too. It says, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Which book? The Istanjil, called the Revelation today. Then it has a colon here. Then it says what? Worship God. Worship the Most High. Worship the main race. Don't worship me. Worship the Most High. That's what he was saying here. So even John, with all of the wisdom that he had, still was falling down and trying to worship the angel that was showing him things. And that's what we're saying here today. It's not about falling down and worshiping anybody. It's about becoming one with that which you see can help you. We understand that there's one who understands the scriptures better than we. And so we say what? Teach us, please. And then he says, I got to put my brain in your head. Because my brain is not my brain. <laughs> my brain is that of 
the guardian angelic host, because Gabriel is the voice of the guardian angelic host. You understand? And so this is what was happening then, this is what is happening now. But the only way that brain can be a part of you and be one with you is if you follow the divine laws. The fast that you are on now is designed to assist you with becoming like the Most High. What is he saying? Is he saying we all are the Most High? We are saying that we are all pillars within the temple of the Most High. Mm -hmm. And when we come together, we represent the Most High here on earth. And that's what our job is. That's what our mission is. That's what our mandate is. Because there are too many people who say they represent the Most High, but it says their mouths are like sepulchers, like graves. They teach death. Mm. Go to the book of Psalms, mm. chapter 5. Mm. <laughs> teaching death, and that's why the people are manifesting death. Don't tell me we so righteous and we so holy than thou, and every time we have a prayer service, more people die? Mm. That makes no sense. Psalm chapter 5, and we're going to read from verse 8. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness, because of mine enemies, you make thy way straight before my face. Stop. Because of mine enemies, I want you to make thy way straight before my face. Because there's people trying to deceive me. There's people trying to teach me other than what you want me to be taught. There's people who's trying to tell me that Yahshua was teaching Christianity. Greco-Roman Christianity. Because we are the true Christians, if anybody's wondering. He's saying, hey church, don't teach Christianity. We don't teach Greco-Roman Christianity. Because <laughs> Yahshua didn't teach that. That's right. Huh? Are the same people who crucified him now teaching his doctrine? <laughs> Wake up! Huh? Are the same people who are throwing rocks at him now saying, oh yeah, he was one of us? Mm -hmm. Really? You mean this dude who was running from you? Because I thought if he was one with you, he'd be praying with you. Where's that scripture? <laughs> huh? I thought he would have been somewhere with you doing what you say you do now. Mm hmm. Even when he was in the temples, y'all was questioning him and didn't understand what he was teaching. That's right. As a boy and even as a man. Yeah, he said, I was in the temple with you daily and I taught you, now you the same people who want to come now and lock me up like I'm a criminal? But now he's the same people telling you that they're the head of religion? Mm. And they can ask you if you really a Christian? No, are you a Christian? I'm on. <laughs> huh? Do you know when the days of atonement are? Do you know when Rosh Hashanah is? Do you know when Hanukkah is? Do you know when Passover is? Do you know why we wear white? Do you know why we wear the fringes and what the fringes really were? Do you know what the law was and what it really was? Why is Deuteronomy the second law? You don't know because you don't live it. This is what we teach in Atonism. This is what we know. You understand? Continue, my sister. Well, there's no faithfulness in their mouth. There's no faithfulness in their mouth. They didn't say it's some. None whatsoever. They on TV telling people, put your hand on the TV. Put your foot on the TV. Come buy this handkerchief. Come get this holy water. Huh? Woman showing her little 1998 breakup call, and I pray, and this is what God sent me. Okay, I hear you. But if you related to the most high, mm. That's what he's saying you? Yeah. <laughs> I ain't saying don't be grateful. <laughs> I just saying if you go by flowers right now, and he ain't the most high, and flowers give you one God, it ain't gonna be one little break up God he's living your flesh for. But they say God give them. <laughs> Stop lying. Stop lying. You understand? Making people think that the little bit of hard earned money they have is destined for the ministry. Mm. Now, if you wanted the ministry, then whatever you put in the ministry will be given it to yourself, right? Because mm -hmm. we're not saying people shouldn't give to the ministry, but don't give to the ministry and then step back. Mm -hmm. Give to the ministry and become one. Mm -hmm. You understand? To 10%. Hmm? Mm -hmm. The works of your 10 fingers. 10% mm -hmm. of 
your, your, your earnings, whatever is best for you that's going to make this work. Because yes, you do need money. <laughs> Not at the expense of making people feel guilty and feeling like, oh, you're going to hell because you didn't give your rent money this week in church. Yeah. Come on. No. It's not what we teach you. Yes? But don't be living lavish and watch us suffer and say you won with us. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> there is no faithfulness in their mouth and what? And the inward part is very wickedness. Mm. Their throat is an open sepulchre. Oh my gosh. Mm. They flutter with their tongue. They flutter with their tongue. You know what an open grave smell like? Mm -hmm. Death and stinkness. Mm -hmm. You think it's perfume. You thought it was incense, eh? That's, that's, that's the death that they're teaching you. And that's why you can't do much with yourself if you're only following the ways of death. They got you like a battery. They're going to use you and use you and use you until they can't use you anymore. Guess what they're going for next? Your children. Don't think they're showing you rompers now because they want you to wear They want your children to wear rompers. We finished with rompers. <laughs> it's called onesies. I have to leave a point. It's crazy, bro. That's crazy. You understand? I'm only saying rumpus because that's what's the Louis flashy thing now. Y'all know we all know I like I'm one of the rumpus off. I don't know what those are. He needs to call them some overalls. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, they put some frills and some <laughs> you know. <laughs> Uh, fur coat around it, <laughs> some high boots, <laughs> right? But the doctrine they're teaching you is just as good as the wrong one. So Psalm 5 is saying that the people who are supposed to be teaching us, my oh gosh, their mouth is like an open sepulcher, mm -hmm. like an open grave. Let's go back to John uh, 17 as we, as we begin to wrap it up. Because this reality must be taught, and we must not shy away from living what the most I have in the one is prescribed for us to live. And so, in John chapter 17, let's go back to verse 21 and let's read on from there. That they all may be one, as our Father art in me, and I in thee. That they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou art sent me. So what's going to allow the world to understand who was sent for them? Us becoming one. There's a song. They will know we are Christians by our love. They will know we are atonists by our love. For each other, not for the world. That's what makes them say, there's got to be something about that church. You see how they look out for each other? Hmm? You see how they make sure that no one is left behind? Mm -hmm. You see how they carry and respect themselves? You see how they treat their women? You see how they treat their men? You see how they treat their children? That is how they're going to see the most I have in the one. I don't care how intellectual we get. There's nobody more intellectual than, than Google. Mm -hmm. well, that's what the brother came in here and told me the other night. Oh, I already know what y'all teaching. See, I got a tablet. Whatever I want to know, I use this. I say, well, who got time to be buried? You. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need. Yes, continue. And the glory which thou givest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. Yes. I in them, and thou in me, uh -huh. that they may be what be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved me. As thou hast loved me. Stop. So how are we going to be made perfect? By becoming one. Made perfect. So you do have the ability to be perfect. But not perfect as in I never ever made a mistake. Because that means no one is ever perfect. Perfect means to be complete. It means to have a complete understanding of your true religious identity and to live it. That's what makes you perfect. Perfect means, yes, I made a mistake, and now I'm going to fix the mistake to the best of my abilities. Restitution. Come on. You understand? That's where your perfection comes in. Perfection comes in you knowing who you are, so that when other people come and tell you about their greatness, you can say, that's beautiful. Now let me tell you about mine. 
as opposed to running behind them and trying to become one with their greatness. And the truth is, they ain't gonna never let you be one with their greatness. You walk into their houses, they got all their pictures up. And who, where, where, where can they put mine? Oh, we don't have any more space, my friend. You're gonna sit right here and give us all your money. Amen? I say yes, amen. Yeah? As opposed to walking into a house where you can see yourself. Yeah? So our perfection comes together as we become one. Verse 24. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am. So even Yahshua couldn't make the people do it, you know. He had a will. He had this desire for his people to be one. But he was praying. He was saying, I, that's my will. But then ultimately the choice is up to each and every one of us. Go ahead. That they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. So this glory that he's talking about, right? Is the word duxa. Duxa. My this opinion, this judgment, this view. That's what the glory is. Let me show it to you through African eyes. I can't show it to you through African eyes if you don't become one. Draw near, is what Barsash is always saying to us. And then what else does he say? Stay near. Because mm -hmm. oftentimes we'll draw near, but then we'll get busy or unfocused or sidetracked. Side or... I mean, it's easy for me. I got to be here. So. <laughs> Some of y'all, you know, it may be difficult. You understand? So I say that as an encouragement. I always encourage. I never want to come down on you because y'all are here. Without y'all, this is nothing. We just have a bunch of books and we know some stuff. With you though, this is real. You understand? So that glory is an opinion of judgment of you, um, an estimate, whether good or bad, concerning someone. In other words, he wanted the people to be able to see things with African eyes. That's where our glory is. That's when we can see ourselves for who we really are. Continue. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. Yes. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare that the love wherein thou hast loved me as love me may be in them, mm -hmm. and I in them. So he was saying that there's a name that he was going to declare. Why didn't they put the name in? Mm -hmm. That would have made sense. Or well, somebody was trying to hide the name from you. I mean, wouldn't it make sense to say what the name was? You think he was saying that and not saying the name? Or they didn't want you to know a name right? Because they tell you they don't know the name. They give you a bunch of consonants. Huh? Yeah, I pronounce it. Yeah, pronounce that. <laughs> oh, Father, we pray in your name. Huh? Like, y'all gonna fit every time you try to say that. But that's what they say it is. We can't say it. No, you can't say it because you don't have the language. You can't say it because it was never yours to say. Because hmm? it's coming out of a tonism, it was coming out of our true religious identity. Stop being fooled by people who don't even know what the name of the Most High is. Hmm. And what do we mean by that? We as Tamarians, we as Tonus Karastians, we have a name and a connection with the Most High. Now, those who are of the Greco-Roman lineage, and they say, well, that's Jesus is who we call her on. Mm. I can't fight you on that. That's your lineage, and you worship Zeus. I get it. But don't tell me I got to worship Zeus. That's right. Zeus enslaved me. Zeus lied to me. Zeus covered up my doctrine. Zeus told me to disrespect my parents. Zeus told me to disrespect my wife. Zeus told me that in order for me to make it, I got to make sure that it's just all about me. Mm. I think we'll be teaching. That's what you're doing, though. Mm. Mm? 
You don't know the scripture by which they say you know the book by the cover. No, you know the book by the people who follow the book. And when I look at the people who say that they follow this book, they're a bunch of gravelicious, lying people who have no respect for anything they say they actually live by in this book. That's how most of them live. And that's why people don't respect the church. And that's why the children ain't interested in the church. We turned on the radio this morning, nigga. Who want to listen to that? Huh? You trying to get him from listening to Drake and Nicki Minaj and some of these stupid mumble rappers. And that's what you trying to entice him with? I just being real right now. That's what you're up against. <laughs> they don't want to say your oh, name. They don't want to say your name. Yeah, man, I'm a little Kodak man. I saw the dance girl. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I think I don't know. <laughs> so, are we finished here in John? Yeah. And so we wrap up then by encouraging each and every one of us to be guided by at one. Think about what it means to be at one with the most time. You have to actually understand and read the laws of Mahat in order for you to live them. And in living them, you become one with the most high. See, the job of we as atonists is not to hide and not be seen, you know. It says you, you should be in the world. You read all of John 17, I don't have time right now. Read it. Because it's saying to you, no, you're going to be in the world. But not of it. You understand? Because if not, how else would the world ever come to know of atonism? You understand? So we're not these people who say, oh yeah, I say it, so all your jokes stay alone. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you ain't know how to have fun no more. Sorry. You're boring. <laughs> what happened to them, Charlie? He said. <laughs> 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 Barn is hell right now. <laughs> the people are saying, right? No, you should be more funny. You should be more fun. Once you know what fun is, yes. how you know you're having fun and you high? Someone got to tell you how much fun you have. <laughs> <laughs> you was carrying on the other night, baby. You know what I was doing? <laughs> That's what you call That's what we call it fun. Huh? You know, you get to that age when you can start going out, and then you go in, you go in the club, you know, and the music loud, you can't hear nobody. Oh, what do you say? <laughs> Who is Oh, yeah, 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 that's all boys and stuff. Yeah, I tell her, yeah. All night you got to scream like that. <laughs> Don't miss and take your little girlfriend in the club. I remember when I was coming home from high school, I got a little girlfriend, we began in the club. I, I go into the bathroom, I come back, meet the fellas, I don't know who make y'all. See, this is what I come in the club for? <laughs> this is what fun is? <laughs> Excuse me, brother. Oh, it's <laughs> my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You done half cut. Three fellas on the wall watching me to see how I can ask him to talk to my girlfriend. <laughs> That's fun. My brothers and sisters, we end today by saying to you as we go through this fast, as we reflect, this is an opportunity now. Think of all of the bad habits that we that you have. We all have bad habits. You know? And think about the, what is causing you to constantly do the things that you don't want to do. <laughs> this fast is going to allow you to move everything out of the way. And focus on those things that you really want to move. It's going to be painful at times. It's going to be weak at times. Right? It's going to get to the point where you say, Oh, really? I know you're right. Really? <laughs> just, what we, just what we got to do? <laughs> you know? And we're here for each other. When you feel that, 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 that call to, Man, I, I don't know if I can do this. You know, call a brother, call a sister. Ask them how they doing. You know what I'm saying? Because if you're not going through it, then you you can't say you live it. Right. That's right. Boy. 
And you can't say you're a baller and you ain't never bought. Okay? You've never been on the court. But if you're in the tonus and you, you felt the pain of fasting, and you felt the benefits, most importantly, of fasting, and this is what Yahshua taught in order that we be at one with the most I have only one and they rate. With that we say I'm one. I'm one. I'm one. Namaste. Namaste. I want to go fire, man. <laughs>